Hi, I'm Anya Stetler from our Developer Relations team, and I'll be talking to you about using our APIs to integrate to our service. Let's start with an overview of the integration process. We'll talk about starting with your Avatax account, your company profile, looking up transactions once you get to record them, and checking your tax results. Then we'll move into talking about the actual API objects and resources, primarily get tax, the parameters that you're going to need to use to calculate tax, some results that you might see or might not see, as well as modifying documents, committing documents, voiding documents, and processing returns. Finally, we, once we have all that information, we'll look at some sample document life cycles, which maybe will be helpful to your integration. So let's start with talking about signing up for your Avatax account. You can always sign up for a free trial at our site, and that'll give you 30 days of free development time before you need to talk to business development or sign an agreement as a partner. It's a great way to try out the APIs and just record some transactions and see what they can do for you. Once you have a free trial account, you can log in to your admin console and take a look at your company profile. We provide you a sample company profile with everything already set up to make API calls, but just to run through everything really quickly, let's take a look at the elements here that you might need to know about. The first and most important thing is Nexus. Nexus tells our service where you need to calculate tax. So if you have no Nexus, then we calculate no tax because we think you need to calculate tax nowhere. Uh, this is going to be the most important part as you're developing. Everything else is pretty much business rules. Um, and from a strictly software point of view, you probably won't need to worry about it. Once you get involved with our APIs and are starting to record transactions, you can take a look at them on the admin console in this transaction tab. Transaction tab will list all the transactions. By default, it filters only to today's transactions based on document date. So make sure to check your filters if you're not finding transactions you've recorded. If you want to check the results that you're getting back and making sure that you're consuming the data correctly, we have a couple tools for that. The easiest one to use is called the Basic Tax Calculator. It allows you to just do some address checking on a single line item transaction. If you want something more complicated to reflect exemption status and some more subtle elements of your requests, you might want to take a look at the Advanced Tax Calculator, which allows you to represent all of the items on your request in a sample environment directly on the Admin Console. Okay, so now that we've talked about your Admin Console, let's talk about the methods that you might use. The biggest and most important one is going to be get tax. We'll get into this in a little more depth in a minute. We're going to talk about parameters of tax calculation as well as some results, non-taxable zeros versus exempt zeros. We'll also talk about committing documents, voiding documents, and processing returns. For each of these, I'm going to talk about the use case, the parameters you're going to need to call these methods, and the results you can expect. So first method is get tax. This is really the heart of our API. This is how you are going to calculate tax and record your documents. The request object for this resource represents an entire order or invoice. All the addresses associated with the document have to be included here, whether they're document level or line level, and all charges associated with your document need to be included. So that includes items sold, services, shipping, handling, miscellaneous charges. All of that stuff just shows up as line items here. Here are all of the parameters for get tax. As you can see, there are quite a few. You may not need to use all of these, but we've included as many parameters as we thought might be useful for maximum flexibility. Here are the parameters for get tax that are absolutely 100% required. You cannot get away with not sending us these. Running through them really quickly, and all of this is documented in our technical API documentation on our site, of course. So walking through these really quickly. On your get tax request at the document level, you have company code. That tells us which company on your admin console profile to call and which tax profile to use. Second, we have document type. Document type tells us whether or not to record a transaction. Dot .code represents your invoice number or unique order ID. Document date represents the reporting date that we need to use for your document. Customer code is a unique identifier of the person making the purchase. So that would be the person buying the things from your e-commerce store, for example. Origin code corresponds to the origin address. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about addresses. Uh, destination code indicates to us your destination address. You'll have an array of addresses, more on that in a second. An array of lines, represent your charges, shipping, etc. The detail level, so how much information about the tax calculation you want to get back, and whether or not you want us to set the document, if it's saved, to be committed and reportable. 
on those lines that you're going to send us, here are the required fields. So the first one is line number. That just has to be unique within your document. You can make them ordinals, one, two, three, four, that's just fine. Origin code and destination code, similarly to the document level, correspond to line level origin and destination addresses. More on that again when we talk about addresses. Item code is going to be the SKU or unique identifier for the item. Tax code represents the product taxability group for Avatax. Quantity is going to be the quantity associated with your item. Amount should be your extended amount, so quantity times unit price, please. Uh, and then finally, a description, which is usually just your product name. I promised addresses, so here they are. Each address is, should be uniquely identified within your GetText request by an address code, and then some basic address information. Address line one, city, region, postal code, country. You could alternately identify it by latitude and longitude. Uh, either of those options are equally good. Latitude, longitude, note, we'll still need an address code. OK, so that's what you're really required to do. What might you want to do? Here is a list of all of the case-specific parameters in your get tax request. So these are not things that are appropriate to send all the time, but there are some cases where you definitely want to send them. The biggest two are at the get tax request level and also available at the line level, indicate customer exemption. That's customer usage type and exemption number. Those are both ways of indicating customer exempt status, so if they're a reseller or a government organization. There's also discount, so if you want to use our discount functionality to apply a discount to your past amounts, very important. At the line level, you're going to use discounted to indicate that the document level discount should be applied to this line. At the document level or line level, you may apply a tax override. Tax override overrides in some way the calculation that we would automatically do on the document. We'll talk about this a little bit more when we get into returns, but, uh, but there are three types of overrides. Um, one of them allows you to override the actual tax amount that we calculated. That's usually done for after the fact reporting. One that allows you to override the date that we would use to pull the tax rates and boundaries. That's usually used on returns. We'll talk about more of that on returns. And then the tax override reason. Um, you, you'll always want to send us that. It's just an audit reason as to why you overrode our tax calculation. Additionally, at the line level, there's a field tax included, which is just a Boolean value, which tells us whether or not you would like us to back calculate out the tax from the total amount passed in on your request. So if you give us $10, we'll say, well, $9 of that is the amount, a dollar of that is the tax, and we'll go ahead and distribute that appropriately across the jurisdictions that we find. On the address level, if you have line two and three, those are appropriate to send to us, again, for very case specific. There are also some pieces of the get tax request that are truly optional that do not affect your tax calculation uh, and are really just reportable fields that you can send in, report out. Some people like to use them for that reason. And so I'm not really going to go through these, uh, but these are the optional only fields that affect reporting, but not your tax calculation. Let's talk about some response things that you might run into uh, and some terminology here. So there's two different reasons why you might get a zero tax amount on a tax calculation, given that you have Nexus, and that is that the document was, or line, was non-taxable or it was tax exempt. So non-taxable for us corresponds to item taxability. That's controlled by the get tax request line's tax code property. For example, if you were to send me tax code NT, that indicates that the product is not taxable because of the kind of product that's being sold. So you would expect to see zero dollars of tax on that line. The other reason you might see zero dollars of tax is because the customer is tax exempt. Uh, so exemption we use as a term to describe customer taxability. It's controlled by exemption number or customer usage type at the request or the line level. And if you want to see that work, try sending me a request with customer usage type L. That corresponds to exempt reason other, and you should see zero tax applied to that document or line, depending on where you passed it. Now that we're getting tax, let's talk about recording tax and reporting on tax. Committing documents is something that you're going to want to do when a document has been finalized in your accounting software and the document should be reported and included in liability calculation. Note that committing documents when we talk about that is a change of document status only. Tax has already been calculated and the transaction has already been recorded using that get tax request and your document type. You can do this by using post tax if you're using our SOAP API, which does not initiate a recalculation and only changes the document status. Or with either our REST or SOAP API, you can do this using the actual get tax method. Send us all the same parameters you did on your original tax calculation and just set your commit property to true. 
Let's talk about voiding documents. When do you want to void documents? Well, you only really want to void documents when a transaction has already been recorded in our system. That is, if you were using Doctype Sales Invoice, we've got a record of it, and now you've got to worry about voiding it if appropriate. When is it appropriate? Well, when the transaction is deleted or voided in your accounting software, you'll probably want to reflect that on our side. But you don't want to void things if there's any chance of crossing reporting periods or if there's a separate credit note issued by your accounting software. Again, voiding documents changes the document status of existing documents only. There's a special cancel tax API. The required parameters for that are document code, document type, company code. Those three uniquely identify your document. And a cancel code that will control the final status of the document. So what if we don't want to void a document because we're processing a return? You should process returns and reflect them in our system whenever a transaction needs to be netted out, when a void is not appropriate, or when a credit memo or similar is created in your accounting software. On credits, always send us negative amounts and positive quantity. That's how our system expects to see returns. Please make sure those are the numbers. On returns, document date needs to be the date the return is processed because that's what we're going to use for your reporting. If somebody purchased something three months ago and they didn't get around to returning it till today, you want to make sure that return is processed in this month's reporting period, not in the reporting period three months ago. You already filed those returns. For SOAP and REST integrations, you also want to send us the tax override tax date to make sure we use the tax rates as of three months ago, just in case they've changed. To do a tax date override, make sure you send us tax override type as tax date, the tax override tax date is the original invoice date, and the tax override reason as some explanatory audit message. Let's talk about some sample document life cycles that may be applicable to you. We'll start simple, we'll get more complex. This is our sample life cycle for e-commerce and mobile payment systems. And as you can see, it's just kind of a workflow. Uh, a user puts items in cart, they enter the shipping info page, where they put in their shipping address. At this point, you can make a call to Avatax to calculate tax since we know where the items are going. At this time, you don't want to record anything in Avatax. The user could abandon your cart. So just use document type of sales order. Once they've confirmed the order and entered payment, at that point, you want to record the document on our side and perhaps set it to committed immediately. If you have to reflect returns, then you'll need to do that as a separate transaction, either to void them or to reflect the credit memo. Things get a little more complicated when we look at an ERP model just because there's more moving parts. So the things to look out for here are the differences between quotes, sales orders, and sales invoices, as well as an independent posting process. So these are some things you might want to keep an eye out for in all systems, but primarily in ERP systems. Quotes and sales orders usually are not recorded in our system, which means that you should be calling us with document type of sales order on that get tax call, whereas invoices usually should be recorded. In those cases, use document type sales invoice. Once the document is finalized, make sure to set that document to committed so that we can report on it. A similar process can be used for returns or any other document type that you may need to accommodate. That's the basic overview of our services and how to use them. For a little more in-depth look at the actual APIs, check out some of our other videos.